Okay, so you want a hundred face? Hundred face. Ten tubes. Ten tubes. <laughs> Hey, Tim. How are you? Hey, Yankee. I'm here to continue filling what I'm calling a barter box. A barter box of quarters. I have my barter box of half dollars. I keep tripping over this bag of quarters. Oh, there we go. I don't know if I should nice. be in advertising for anybody. But... Bloomington, Minnesota. Well, if you're from Bloomington, Minnesota, tell me in the comments here. But all right, so these are quarters. I started with the half dollar guardhouse box. Yeah. So I thought, oh, okay, I'll start with the half dollar. Really small tubes. Eh? Yeah, they are. They're the short ones. Well, I just bought the quarter guardhouse box. There's $500 face in that box. It's going to take me a while to fill that up. Yeah, well. <laughs> like you're really sorry for me. You have some <laughs> serious money when you do that. You do. And I'm working on it. So... You know, I, I, I want to get um, probably a hundred right now. That will get me up probably a quarter of the way. I don't know. We'll see. So your friend and mine, um, <laughs> President, I got to say this right, President Biden. Yes, I got uh, Oh, not Brandon. Oh, Anyways, he just wrote in uh, uh, a letter to the Federal Trade Commission. He said, oh, this kills me. I am writing to call your attention to mounting evidence of anti-consumer behavior by oil and gas companies. The bottom line is this. Gasoline prices at the pump remain high, even though oil and gas companies' costs are declining. He says the prices at the pump have continued to rise, even as refined fuel costs go down and industry profits go up. Yeah. When I read that, I, you know what I thought? I thought of the 1970s when I was young, admittedly so, um, and what we went through with Jimmy Carter and how they constantly blamed the inflation that we were going through back then on consumers yep. and on big businesses. Everywhere else, they were pointing the finger except back on themselves. That's right. Well, it's interesting that he uses the term anti-consumer behavior. Because this president is about as anti-consumer as any president we've ever had. Um, he created the crisis. And um, after reading a letter like this, whoever's putting those stickers on the gas pumps will probably be putting a lot more stickers on the gas pumps. I think you can get a batch of them from Amazon where it says, I did that. It's a picture of Biden pointing to the price because he did that. Okay, he's solely responsible for raising the price of uh, energy, and it's going to have dire consequences for the winter time. Uh, the last time that we had four dollar heating oil here in New Hampshire, there were many older people who could not afford to buy that uh, heating oil, and they were, you know, trying to heat their apartments with a you know, gas oven, and they're dying of carbon monoxide. Nice. I mean, it happened many times in this state when mm -hmm. it was $4 a gallon. Um, he knows that, and he's got to lay the groundwork for blaming everybody but himself, and that's what that letter is about, okay? Yeah. Blaming the oil companies, uh, where they're making great profits. Go look at the profits they're making. They're not great at all. And, you know, somebody who has several oil companies in my portfolio, I can tell you, they're nowhere near back to pre-pandemic uh, levels. And uh, you know, especially in earnings. It's a scapegoat. It is. Yes. But, you know, the wider distribution they get for the stuff like this, there'll be these people who, you know, said, you know, who are right now saying, well, I'm kind of on the fence. I don't think he's doing that good a job. They're saying, well, it's those evil oil companies. It's just not true. If we were all going out and having lunch together and I said, let's ask whoever the, whoever's in the next table, no matter how what, what restaurant we're in, have, have them explain the supply chain to us. And by the way, you all write for a living. I haven't seen any one of you explain the supply chain very well. Confusing time. Think of all those children. I wouldn't be surprised if President Biden calls upon the Congress for a uh, congressional investigation, some panel to come together and figure out why these prices are going up, not just in oil, right, and gas, but across the board. And then come back with, a, I think it was a report in 
what was it, 96, that said um, our, uh, our, our estimates or our formula for inflation is wrong. And they jerry-rigged the whole uh, formula to make inflation look better. I would not be surprised, Tim, if they manipulate these again and and say, wait a minute, we're wrong. The inflation isn't really 10% or 15 or whatever it goes up to. It's really only three. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, but that's that's why they don't include energy and food in the inflation numbers. And, you know, it's, I mean, what else can you take out of the numbers? What else can you take out of the formula? Yeah. Um, but if you add in energy and food, um, it is between 10 and 15% inflation mm. right now. And, it, you know, it's, there are a lot of people who um, want to invest their money. And, uh, you know, they're looking at, um, you know, dividends and, you know, and uh, uh, equities and how well they're doing. But if you, if you can pay down a loan, it doesn't matter if it's a 3% loan or a 5% loan, if you can pay down a loan uh, with that money, that makes more sense than investing it. Because if you invest your money, you need to get whatever the percentage of that loan that you should have paid down plus inflation. And if you don't add the inflation component, you're you're investing in the wrong place. Infl yeah. You know, they say inflation floats all boats, and you know as it goes up, gold and silver will be, you know, they'll take. It's actually when the dollar, the value of the dollar drops, which is what inflation does. Right. Then you'll see the metals go up all by themselves. Speaking of gasoline, let me just run over here. I'm gonna. Shine across the street there. About 350 gallon? Yep, 349. That's about um, average for the nation. 349.9. fine. The national average I just read was around $3.40, right? Yeah, and yeah, it's, it, it's probably a little higher than that. Right. Because in California now it's up yeah, $7 California. $8 a gallon. It's crazy. But I look at quarters, and I'm, I was just calculating this on the way over. Um, you know, they can go for 22 face, 24 face, whatever right now, right? So yeah. I was thinking, you know, divide that by four, you're, you're looking at about six-ish dollars a quarter. And I'm thinking, okay, so that's like roughly, say, just under two gallons a quarter. So for, I get my car has like 12 gallons, 12 gallons to fill the tank, right? So I'm thinking six, seven quarters, six, seven silver quarters could potentially barter my way to a full gas tank. That's right. That That is what I'm thinking when I think about a barter box, the potential of actually using silver. I, I had somebody in, in my comments say, Yankee, you know, you, you put a silver quarter in front of somebody after an SHTF scenario, uh, they're gonna give you a quarter's worth of whatever it is you're buying. And I'm like, what if they're pricing their product in terms of silver? You can buy it if it's a silver quarter for 25 cents. Yes. Maybe that is what we, I hope not, but potentially could see one day if the dollar is destroyed. It's already taking place in a lot of places around the country. I, I've been sending stuff out west for probably the last 10 years to people who use it for barter. Right. right. And, you know, it, let's say you're out in the boondocks. You know, you've got a ranch or a farm. Um, it's a simple matter of having a local merchant agree to take silver for a full or partial payment for whatever it is you're buying. Right. Right. And uh, I think there are a lot of places like that around the country. Right. I know because I'm getting calls from, because of, of you. Oh no. <laughs> calls from all over the country. Oh, man, and, that's um, great, that really more, is good. And it's, the, this stuff is getting to be a little constrained because people are not letting go. <laughs> They're holding on to their constitutional yeah, silver, right? Their constitutional silver. Yeah, right, right. Ninety percent. Can I dig into this and let's take a sure. look? There we go. Man. All right. 
Okay, so you want a hundred face? A hundred face. Ten tubes. Ten tubes. Did I make all those piles correct? I I think so, but um check them. All right, so man, I didn't quite I didn't quite empty out here. Now I did take out some of the all the actually all the barbers and saving liberties. This is just going to be a, a Washington barter box, which at some level I think is nice in that I think there's less wear on average with these because they're newer. But at the same time, you have to check the date. You can't just look at it and immediately know that it is a silver quarter. So, or you, you know, as you're counting them, you look at the edge. Yeah, the edge. Yeah. Very cool. This is good. This is good. It's going to be a journey, though, Tim. This is going to take a while. Hopefully, silver doesn't shoot way up, or else I might have to afford the box. Yeah, just buy a smaller box. You know, why didn't I do that? I could have bought a smaller box. Yeah. <laughs> I love buying junk. Oops. Sorry. I love buying 90% silver from Tim. If you guys are interested in getting some incredible constitutional silver, Check out Tim Marshner's point and stamp shop. I'll put the details in the description. People do. They they email me, Yankee, where is Tim's shop? And I'm like, um, it's in the description of the video down below, right down there. Click the little carrot button if you're on your, your phone and you can see the description. I have a whole bunch of links down there too that could be helpful to you. Wow, look at that. That's awesome. Okay, almost killed this bag. Almost killed it. I'm doing my best, Tim. Yeah, this is probably another a thousand in here. Wow. I wonder how long it'll last. No, it's not a thousand. It's... <laughs> I'm telling you, once they see this thing drop, they're going to be interested. They're going to try to beat Yankee to the punch. Yeah, mine. Mine, mine, mine. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> All right, man. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it.